Hi, welcome to lesson 4.3. Here are the objectives that we're going to cover. First of all, Lewis structures. Now, Lewis structures follow an octet rule, which means they try to look like a noble gas having a full electron configuration. So, here you can see, if you count them up, this chlorine here has eight electrons, and this chlorine here also has eight electrons, so it has a full valence shell. Now, how do we work out these Lewis dot structures? Uh, first of all, you'll draw in each of the elements, each of the atoms in the compound, then draw the correct number of valence electrons using your periodic table, and make sure everything has joined by at least one line, otherwise it's not a compound. Next, you can uh, count them up to see if there's eight. So there's two, four, six, seven. So they both have seven, so that's not good enough. Uh, and then we, so we draw an extra extra bond in there, and now we have two, four, uh, six, eight. So both sides have eight electrons, so the correct structure must be uh, this. Okay, now if you find that you can't get this to work, uh, what you may need to do after that is try seeing if a dative uh, covalent bond, dative coordinate covalent bond will work, whereas the sharing occurs, but it's actually one element giving both towards the sharing. Okay, so if you're doing that, this is how it's drawn. You drew a little arrow there, uh, and you can see here that the oxygen actually offers both the electrons. IB loves to talk, uh, likes to test you on the exceptions. Now boron and beryllium are, very, are the smallest ones. So there's uh, hydrogen, which is a subatomic particle, and it's like that. Helium is a, is a noble gas. Uh, so the next largest ones are these ones, which are really quite small. So because their nucleus is quite small, fit uh, a smaller number of uh, objects around them. So uh, boron uh, and beryllium, which is coming later, uh, when you see this, just recognize that you're not going to get an octet out of that, and you, there's only six electrons on the outside. Okay, uh, here's another one, beryllium, uh, BF2, again, it's quite small. So uh, here are uh, examples, uh, finished examples. You really need to do the circles in here. Uh, that shows the eight, uh, same here. All right, uh, that one's already done for you. Uh, this one has this going on here. Uh, and here are some more examples as well. All right, uh, this one's an interesting one because it's also got the box around it that we learnt for ions. Okay, just to work these out step by step now, uh, the first thing that you're going to do is draw the atoms. This is water we're doing. Uh, draw a line to each of them, and that works out, so that's quite easy. Uh, and then we can draw out the structure, and it's bent 104.5 degrees. The next one is hydrogen. Again, that's just a single line, and they match up, so there's two electrons around each one, so that's linear 180. Next one is oxygen, which we did in the, in the PowerPoint, so I'll just skip through that one, that's linear. Uh, 180, we'll do the shapes in a second. Uh, nitrogen, you can see here that I've had to draw in three lines before I managed to get eight around each one. So that gives us a triple bond and that becomes linear. Now the carbon dioxide here, uh, you can see that there's a double bond on each of those. And so when I line those up, um, I also get a linear compound, which is 180. Okay, the next compound is methane. Uh, again, when I draw a single line, I get the hydrogens all with the twos and the carbon with the, with the eight, so that's, that's easily done as tetrahedral. Uh, again, here with uh, ethene, uh, eth, eth, uh, ethene it is. Uh, I've had to draw a second line in between the two carbons before I can get both carbons to have eight. And so that's the compound. Finally, chlorine. Uh, that one's also one done in the PowerPoint. It's quite a simple one. Okay, hydrogen chloride, again, quite easy. 
ammonium, quite ammonia, quite easy. It's just the trip, double and triple bonds that get a little bit trickier, and we can have trickier compounds a little later on, especially for high level. Moving on to shapes now, the valence uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Uh, here we have uh, a, a way that we can work out the three-dimensional shape and it's based around how many electron domains there are and they repel each other to form a certain three-dimensional shape. So uh, it's important to note that you must have the non-bonding pairs because they play uh, just as big an influence or a bigger influence than the bonding pairs because there is not this positive nuclei pulling these electrons away and so these electrons are actually closer to this nucleus and so their repulsion is actually greater. So this will actually have a greater effect on the shape than the bonding pair electrons. So you must always draw your full Lewis structures in order to get these things drawn accurately. So uh, these are based on electron domains. Uh, there are three electron domains here. You're not going to know that until you draw the Lewis structures, so let's move quickly on to those. Uh, these are the rules. Draw the electron uh, Lewis electron dot structure. Identify the central atom. Count the total number of electron pairs around the atom. Predict the electron shape. Predict the shape of the molecule using bonding atoms. So the shape is determined by the bonding bonds and not the electron uh, pairs, the free electron pairs. So here's a summary uh, table of them. This here is a summary of uh, how many electron domains an, an atom can have and if they're all completely filled with bonding as bonding pairs uh, these are the base shapes that you're going to have. Now once you remove one of those bonds and make them a non-bonding pair uh, you'll have a slightly different shape. Uh, again this is what I mentioned before the non-bonding lone pair electrons are going to have much greater repulsion because they're much closer together because they're pulled in closer to the nucleus. And let's just go to some real examples here. Uh, so starting with the two electron domains, these are linear molecules. Uh, this is a three electron domain causing trigonal planar. Remove one of those and it becomes bent. Remember 117 degrees. Next one is the four electron domain, which is the most common. Tetrahedral, methane is a good example of that. If we remove one of those electrons, it now becomes trigonal planar. And so hydronium ion was the example we just showed, and there's ammonia up there as well. It's pushed down from 109.5 to 107. Remove one more of those electrons and we have a bent, V-shaped or angular. Uh, again, there we have uh, two, as I showed before in the PowerPoint, there's two, so it's pushed down the most, it's 104.5. Next, we're moving on to resonance structures. Now, we need to draw the Lewis structures in order to work out whether it's a resonance. So if you can draw a Lewis structure, two Lewis structures that look exactly the same, that's your key to knowing that what's going on is resonance. So the electrons are actually free to move across both of these areas. So how we draw it is this, we draw this dotted line in here. And so actually these electrons are shared over the entire molecule. All right, and we're gonna learn that that's called a pi bond and they're caused from p orbitals. All right, this is most, the most commonly done with ozone. All right, so here we have uh, the nitrate molecule. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, that's a third uh, bond orders of a negative a third spread out over the molecule, and that's what it looks like uh, in a diagrammatic uh, form. And benzene is also a, a sort of a classic one because it's quite easy to see uh, that the electrons are just zipping around in there, so that's why they draw a circle. And carbonate, again, there's three different structures here. Uh, and so we can work out that there's two charges here spread over three bonds. Um, so if you add those up, uh, that will add to minus two. And so there's a, there's a negative two-thirds charge spread out over the entire molecule. 
So this is how we work out the resonance then. Uh, drawing the Lewis structures, drawing the nitrogen with the valence electrons, then drawing the oxygens in there, drawing a single bond of each, uh, counting that up to see if it works out. It doesn't, so we do a dative bond. That works. Try a double bond. That works as well. Uh, and then we can rotate that and have many different forms. Uh, so that must be trigonal planar and that must be resonance. Uh, and so that's, we draw the little dotted lines in there, divide up the charge by the number of bonds that are shared and that's minus a third charge for each. Carbonate, same idea, draw the Lewis structure, a single line doesn't work, doesn't add up to all of them, uh, so draw the double line in there, draw the extra two dot electrons in there to make up the charge, that works up to eight. You can rotate that, you can have different sides uh, with the double bond, etc. So that tells you that the, the charge is spread. Divide up the charge by the number of areas and you have minus two thirds. And so that must be trigonal planar 120. Lastly, looking at much larger covalent structures. Carbon structures is first. These are called allotropes because they have the same element but they're in a completely different structure and they behave in completely different ways. So here we have diamond and every diamond, every carbon is bound to another four atoms. So if you look at what, any one of these carbons, uh, it's, it's bound in another four positions. So that's the hardest natural substance known that we have. Um, if you have a look at the, uh, the melting point, it's quite high, it's quite hard. It doesn't connect elect electricity because it's, the electrons are uh, trapped in these very strong bonds. Uh, and so it's um, insoluble because it's such a large molecule. The next is graphite, again made of carbon, the exact same substance, but this is quite special in that the carbon is only bound to three others. So there are leftover p orbitals here, and these overlapping p orbitals mean that there's electrons that are shared and delocalized in between these sheets, which means the sheets are quite, the graphite is the opposite of diamond, it's quite soft, and it can actually conduct electricity through here. So the only thing holding uh, these sheets together are very weak London dispersion forces. Uh, that's why they're quite soft. But the sheets themselves are actually covalent bonds, so the intramolecular. So that's quite strong. So here we have the properties, as I just mentioned. Um, high melting point, insoluble, slippery, conducts electricity. Very different from diamond. Now the next uh, allotrope is something similar to graphite except for it's just one super large sheet. Now these sheets are so strong that you can actually get a single layer of, of this and of the size of a football pitch and hold it. If you can hold it straight it won't bend. Uh, so these are man-made structures and these are the hardest known things. Uh, they're man-made so uh, carbon forms the, the hardest natural substance and the hardest uh, man-made substance. Uh, so these can also conduct electricity uh, or act as insulators as well. Uh, finally just some structures, buckyballs, when you connect them all up get 60 of them and make them into a ball. Uh, that's Buckminster Fullerene it's also called. Uh, just some models here, you can see the diamond there, if you push on it it's quite strong. Uh, you can see the sheets can move back and forth between each other under dispersion forces and here there's an electron in between so you can see how the electron can just zip around in there. Lastly silicon structures, quartz, uh, we make uh, glass out of, out of sand which is made out of silicon. The important thing to note here is the repeating structure is SiO2 uh, but it forms this sort of tetrahedral shape and so it looks kind of similar to diamond but it's it's more spread out and weaker. If you actually press on the model I have you can actually feel how it's weaker. Um, so structurally it's a tetrahedron uh, but the formula unit is SiO2 uh, and that's a covalent. If you look up the electronegativity that is a covalent uh, molecule. So it's um, greater bond length so it's a lower bond length or easier to break so it's, it's weaker than diamond.